Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the CIA. And no, I'm not talking about the three letter American agency. We're going to be looking at the CIA triad. Now, this is an informational security model that describes three core principles of security, confidentiality, integrity and availability. These three principles provide the foundation for all things information security. So let's dive into each of these principles. The first one is confidentiality. Now, confidentiality refers to the protection of data from unauthorized people or systems. This plays a vital part in security. If data is not kept private and confidential, it could fall into the wrong hands, causing things like financial loss, identity theft, or reputational damage. Let me give you an example. When you log on to your online banking and you see your account numbers, your balances, recent transactions, card numbers, and other sensitive data, all of this is highly personal to you. Now, you wouldn't just want anyone being able to access this information, right? For example, you wouldn't want someone from, say, the bank's marketing teams to be able to access your recent transactions and your bank account details, would you? Confidentiality means that only authorized users and systems have access to your information. There are lots of ways that data confidentiality can be breached. Attackers could directly target systems holding confidential data and then steal it. They could attempt to eavesdrop on communications and try to intercept information such as passwords, files, or even messages. It may not even be an attacker that causes the confidentiality breach. Have you ever sent an email or a text to the wrong person? And we've all done it, right? Well, what if that email contains sensitive information relating to a customer? The confidentiality of that data would be affected. Now, there are many ways to protect our data and keep it confidential. For example, data protection products are available to ensure data only goes to authorized locations. Encryption helps keep data away from the prying eyes, both in communication and in storage. Endpoint protection tools can help protect against attacks on computers and servers that hold confidential information. These are just a few examples, but there are many, many ways that we can protect the confidentiality of our data. The next principle is integrity. Now, integrity refers to the accuracy of our data. This means ensuring that the data has not been tampered with or altered with in any kind of way. This could be done either by accident or maliciously. There are many examples how the integrity of data can be affected. Let's take our banking example again. If an attacker was able to interfere with your payment requests, maybe they're able to change the amount or the destination bank account. This would affect the integrity of your request because it was tampered with by someone other than you. Let's look at some other examples. Imagine a company creates software that users can download. If an attacker targeted that company, and they were able to modify the software to include some sort of malware, this would infect the integrity of that software because again, it was altered from its original state. Another example may be when an attacker can intercept or modify an email before it gets to the recipient. That way, the integrity of the email is gone. Other examples include modifying configuration files, editing or removing logs, and intercepting network communication. There are many methods that we can use to protect the integrity of our data though. Change control processes can ensure that only approved changes can be made to systems and data. This can help minimize mistakes that could affect data integrity. Hashing can be used to ensure files are still in their original form and haven't been tampered with. Now, a hash is a string of characters generated from a file or other data sources. Even the slightest change of a file will change the hash completely. A good example of how hashing is used to ensure file integrity is when you download a file from a website. Often, the hash of that file will also be provided so you can then check that your download has not been corrupted or modified from the original state. For example, here is a downloaded copy of the Ubuntu Linux operating system. The file includes a hash that I can then check against the downloaded file to make sure that it hasn't been modified from its original state. And using things called certificates can ensure that emails are coming from the person they claim to be and haven't been modified in any way. 
Certificates can also be used to ensure that web requests and responses are not being tampered with. We can also monitor changes to critical files using file integrity monitoring tools. These are just a few common examples of how we can protect the integrity of our data. Now, the last principle is availability. Preserving the confidentiality and the integrity of our data is great, but it's not very useful if the data can't be accessed, right? Availability refers to the accessibility of data and systems to ensure that authorized users can access the data they need when they need it. Lots of things can affect availability. Power cuts, hardware failures, performance issues, cyber attacks, and even natural disasters such as fires and floods can all prevent access to critical data and systems. To reduce risks and increase availability, we can use things like uninterruptible power supplies, also known as UPSs, to ensure systems stay up during power cuts. Using multiple systems with load balancing can help with hardware failures and performance issues. And various security tools can help with cyber attacks that could bring down access to critical systems. When it comes to things such as natural disasters, recovery plans should be in place. You need to ask yourself, if all of the devices in this location are destroyed in a fire or flood, how can we continue to operate as normal? So those are the three principles of information security, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Each is very important by itself, but when used together, they form a model that organizations can use as a guide to protecting their data. For example, if a company is implementing a new system they could look at the CIA triad model and ask themselves, does this keep my data confidential? Could the integrity be compromised? How can we keep things available for the right people? Similarly, the CIA triad can be used to assess risk. When looking at a vulnerability or a weakness in a system, it's important to think about the impact on data confidentiality, integrity and availability that it could potentially affect. Could data be exposed to unauthorized people? Could this affect our data integrity? And will this prevent our authorized users from accessing the data? The answer to these questions will directly affect the severity of that vulnerability or that weakness and how you should prioritize it. This video is part of our Security Plus in 31 Days course. If you like this video, you are gonna love the full course. Not only does it cover each exam topic in simple and easy to understand videos, but it also provides hands-on labs. These labs guide you through practical tasks like creating Trojans, cracking passwords, and sending your own phishing emails, giving you real-world experience and making your studies that much more engaging and effective. It doesn't stop there though. You also get a copy of our Security Plus in 31 Days ebook which follows the course and covers each topic. You'll also get access to helpful downloads to support your learning, a private community where you can connect with fellow learners and exclusive discounts. It really is the complete package to guide you through your Security Plus journey. Check it out in the description below. So that's this CIA triad a concept that really underpins information security. By focusing on these principles, organizations can build secure systems and policies that protect their data from potential threats. Before we end, let's test your knowledge with a couple of quiz questions. Question one, your IT department identifies a vulnerability in a system that could allow unauthorized users to view sensitive employee records. You need to assess the risk using the CIA triad. Which question should you ask to determine the impact of the data confidentiality? A. Can this vulnerability alter the data? B. Will this prevent access to the authorized users? C. Could this data be exposed to unauthorized people? Or D. Is there a backup for the data? And the answer is C. Could the data be exposed to unauthorized people? Confidentiality ensures that data is only accessible by authorized people and systems. By being exposed to others, confidentiality is lost. Now let's look at a question from our friends over at Boson using their Exim Max practice exams. Which of the following best describes the role of a CDN? Select the best answer. Is it A, availability, B, confidentiality, C, redundancy, 
or D, integrity. For those of you who don't know what a CDN is, I'll give you a little hint. A CDN or content delivery network is a network of servers that caches website data and delivers it to users, helping to improve website speed. So with that said, I'll go over and click show answer, which will give our answer. The correct answer is A, and here is the explanation. So feel free to pause the video and have a little read. Again, that question was from Boson XM Max, which I highly recommend. You can find the link in the description. And by the way, the SERP Bros Premium students with the full course get a lovely discount as well. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching. <laughs>